Welcome back to another episode of Books and Puppies and Cat because Cat, cat is up, Cat's up there. Cat will probably try to come join me at some point. Uh, I did not want to know about this book, but apparently the entirety of the internet wants me to know about this one book. Lightlark by Alex Astor. I don't have a TikTok, but I do have Instagram, which means that I get TikToks reels three weeks later after they're first posted. I start getting these TikToks showing up in my feed. I start getting advertisements all over the internet for this one book, Lightlark, the biggest new hit, which was really weird because this is not the sort of book that I read. And I started to think, Something's going on, and something was. Let me take you on the fantastical tale that is Lightlark and this piece of investigative journalism. Alex Astor is a book talk star with a million followers, like about the same number as I do. And her TikToks seem to fall into three different categories. One, it's her saying, I wanted to be an author ever since I was 12, but all I was getting was rejections, uh, but now I'm getting a six-figure book deal, and my book is being put out by all the major publisher publishers across the world, and uh, a movie is being made by the producers of Twilight. And then there's the second type, the horny ones, which is like her saying, you know, do you want to read a book about a, a dark prince who gets the girl and the girl has got to pick between three different guys and there's steamy, spicy sex scenes. Um, as I said, I don't read these types of books, but that's my impression of kind of how they sound. And three, a blurb of sorts saying, you know, would you read a book about a, a, a cursed island that appears every hundred of years and six people fight uh, in, a, in a tournament to uh, break the curse? Uh, something like that. And uh, so that is what it's about. It's, it's, it's apparently The Hunger Games uh, meets Twilight. Those are the titles that have been thrown around. And just to be clear, it's not my type of book, but it's totally fine if it's yours, okay? You know, I think that we should read what makes us happy. Uh, and it, if that's Lightlark, then all power to you. If that's My Little Pony fanfiction, then all power to you. A lot of the time people just like crap on stories because they're, you know, for teenagers or middle grade or, or because they, you know, they have sort of certain tropes or whatever. And I, I, I don't know, I just, I, I feel like that's kind of dumb. I feel that's kind of dumb. Uh, Alex Esther, uh, with all of the stuff that is apparently being said, uh, there's a lot up in the air, we don't know. She may be a very nice girl, do not go harass her, don't do that. But these TikToks kept appearing in my feed, all the time, uh, constantly, and I was like, I'm not interested in this, and they just kept on coming. So I wanted to know what was going on here. It is no shock that someone with a million followers on TikTok gets a book deal. You know, celebrities have been getting book deals because they're celebrities uh, for a long time. And to be clear, that's not to say that the book isn't good. You know, people can write really good books, even if they've got a following. I have a following and I want to be an author and I want to it be to be regarded as me having earned that, not just because I have a following. It's a rough kind of thing to have people view you that way. At the same time, it appears that Lightlark just really played to the publishing trends at the moment, you know, the, 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 the YA kind of fantasy with some spicy elements and guys fighting over a girl and the villain gets the girl and the YA fantasy female authored books with fairy tale world building and sex scenes are all the rage at the moment. It ticks all the right boxes. Especially with the rise of like, you know, Sarah J Maas, A Court of Thorn and Roses and this book has been compared to that. I mean, she's getting ads in Times Square, a six-figure book deal. She's going on Good Morning America to promote the book. Already, the rights to the book have been sold to make a film, and it's already being produced by the producers of Twilight, right? It's, it's actually in production. Uh, that's how they're advertising it. And I couldn't stop wondering why. For someone who is, for the most part, a debut author. She does have a, another couple of books published, but she said that they didn't do very well herself. She's presenting this as kind of like her first real novel. That's how she's sort of selling it. Now, publishing companies always pick and choose which books they want to promote and, in a way, which ones they want to succeed. But I would have thought that they would have waited at least until a book like this had proven itself a little bit more. You know? Like, Harry Potter was pushed real hard, but I mean, that only really happened after the first book had really proved itself as incredibly popular. It started to look to me like Lightlark's success was being manufactured in a way that most books 
aren't, right? And that doesn't sit super well with me. I want publishers to help authors promote and make their books succeed, but I don't want publishers picking who is going to succeed from the start, you know, in that manufactured way that we currently see in the music industry, where your producers will pick a singer out of nothing, they'll pluck them out of the crowd, and then they'll turn them into this huge superstar with this huge apparatus and, and, and money all around them, uh, and they'll, they'll, they'll manufacture a hit song, right? Writing it for them and, 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 and so on. It feels a lot like that. It's already been out like a week or so and there are only 32 reviews on Amazon. Now, there are 1700 reviews on Goodreads, but half of those are either people giving it five stars before they've ever read it, it seems, or people giving it one star to try and balance those out, or potentially because they just hate Alex Astor. I don't really know. There's a lot of social stuff going on behind this that I do not comprehend because I am not on TikTok. But it's been difficult to pass out how much of this is actual real hype. Alex has posted to a TikTok that apparently the first print run has already sold out. Good for her. But there's something weird going on. <laughs> With all of this, I thought, okay, that's it. You know, publisher has picked someone to promote and they are gonna succeed because they chose to do that. Uh, and some people aren't happy with that and, and, and stuff. But then it got deeper and worse. <laughs> Reviews started coming in, especially those who received ARCs, uh, advanced reader copies. These are copies sent out before publication to kind of, you know, give people pre-readings of what it might be like to often help build hype. And it sort of fell into two different camps. You've got the people who are sort of in the industry, right? Uh, and people who are clearly friends of Alex, who are giving it five stars and helping promote it. Uh, and then there's other people who don't have those sort of connections. And it does seem pretty clear from the arcs that the industry has coalesced around Alex Astor in some way that, again, fits into that sort of manufactured hype that feels a little bit odd. Uh, but again, remember, she did get a million followers on TikTok and people are following her for a reason, but then there is the other half of people who are reviewing it and the reviews have not been super positive. In particular, remember all those different types of TikToks that we talked about before, the ones where she's advertising uh, the spicy, sexy scenes and certain lines and tropes. Apparently, some of those don't even appear in the book at all. For example, there's this line which she advertised saying, but what about the game? Uh, and the first yells, exasperated, I don't care about the fucking game anymore, I care about you. But apparently this just, this line just never appears in the book, or, or, the, or the line, eyes on me love, I want to watch you come undone, you know, that, that spicy sexy stuff. Again, apparently never really appears, uh, nor did the, the, the villain to, the villain getting the girl. People are saying like, well he's not really a villain. And people are, apparently, angry. I actually want to read you this one line from one review that kind of stuck with me. Her book was picked not for its quality, but for how successfully she was able to appease the TikTok algorithm. She now has to build her career on this shaky foundation, completely dependent on cont uh, the continued interest in her failing exploits. Which is a hell of a rough thing to say, but um, it, it is right in a way when you think about the way the industry works in some sense. Uh, publishing and, and getting a book to succeed is so dependent on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Uh, it's more algorithmically determined than ever. And again, this is just the industry in a way. Like, you can just say, well, this is happening just to a greater and lesser degree with, with a ton of books all the time. We just don't necessarily notice it. But it does also put Alex in, I think, a really hard position, you know, that I want to talk about because... Th th this is a position that the publishers aren't going to feel. The publishers aren't going to really suffer from. The thing with, like, manufactured success in, in books, in music, is that fundamentally they create a scapegoat. Someone that, if the career falls apart, uh, someone that, if financially it doesn't work out, you know, uh, that they're going to have to be bear the brunt of that going into the future. You know, it's Alex's writing career, it's her name that is going to be 
uh, damaged. Not Simon and Schuster or whoever she published with. Uh, and, and they can drop them at any time, basically. And likewise, they can continue to exploit them. That's why often they pick, you know, people young. It's because they want to get the best, most money out of them that they can, basically. Uh, and, and kids and young people are a lot less likely to, to, to understand that. I mean, what is Alex Astor? She's like 19. I, mean, I just checked. She's, she's 26. She's, she's like my age. <laughs> Okay, still, I know that this kind of sounds like a big grand conspiracy, but in a way, this is just the industry. Uh, Pre-reviews of films or albums or books being positive are nothing new. It's it, it it's just always been that way in, in, in some sense. And I, I don't think you should look at it as like, oh, people being paid for good reviews prior to that, right? That it's all artificial in that sense. But it is does say something about the way the industry is currently working. But then it got muddier because people started to look into her and her background and learned that she came from a very wealthy family with connections to a $200 million company and Selena Gomez and people are saying, oh, well, she must have used her connections to make this book so popular. That's why there's so much money going into this advertising. Uh, this is all speculation. Uh, I don't want to like say it's true. I don't want to say it's false. Alex has come out and said that she used none of her family's money or anything like that, that she did get the advantage of like living at home and you know, not paying rent and she was able to write while she was at school. So she's denied that, but you can see how other people seem to have fit this all into this narrative, right? And I think that's interesting. I personally don't believe that's the case. I think it's way more likely that they looked at her as this kind of social media gem who can use her presence to uh, uh, promote her book, that that is the far more important element. But I don't think it's as simple as that. I have a following about the same size as her and I've sent books out to publishers and agents and I have been rejected plenty of times. Having an audience is by no means a guarantee that you're going to get published. Remember, she had a book that just hit all those buttons of what people were wanting to read and buy. But I will read you this comment because apparently it fits a lot of people's feelings. I just wish she wouldn't paint it as I tried to publish for 10 years, which is the type of TikTok that we mentioned, uh, when she was one, already had a, a series published, or paint it as a rags to riches story when it's more like riches to richer. And again, I want to press that we don't know how true all of this is. A lot of this is unknown. A lot of this is people just inferring things and speculating and making conclusions off pretty shaky evidence overall. Alex insists that she got published through cold emailing the way that we all had to. And I'm perfectly willing to believe that. I think that's 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 pretty common. But at the same time, she clearly hasn't had the same journey that most authors have and the uphill battle that most authors are going to face. And it's worth thinking about how we publish stories these days with that in mind. The final chapter of the story seems to be that when these negative reviews started coming out online, Alex and her editor started to reply to comments and say that, you know, people who are leaving those sort of comments are just because they hate her, that sort of thing, which is never a good look. I remember one time that on Twitter, I said something to the effect of, you know, it, it really sucks when you work on something really hard and then someone just comes and dismisses you entirely. This was in response to a, to a Goodreads thing. I didn't name who the reviewer was or anything like that. I didn't leave an image. Uh, it was kind of just meant to be me reflecting my feelings, but I, I, I probably shouldn't have done that, right? Uh, even implicitly. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really intending, but it doesn't look good regardless, especially if you're not, if you're going out fighting. Ultimately, this was a very weird rabbit hole to go down. Uh, I did not know Lightlark existed, and then I suddenly knew Lightlark existed, and then apparently Lightlark was the biggest book to ever be released ever in the history of mankind. I worry about the future of publishing, I guess. And that's why this story was so interesting to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Have you read... Actually, if you've read Lightlark, please let me know down below. Please, I would be so interested to, to, to hear what you think of the book. Yeah. Dignity. I'll see you in the future.